Kitco Mining special coverage of the Mining Investment Event of the North is brought to you by EMX Royalty Corp. Yanni Metals is advancing a manganese project in Botswana. Eugene Lee is Chief Financial Officer. Eugene, welcome to Kitco. Thank you, Michael. Talk about manganese first, why you focused on it. Manganese seems to be the forgotten metal that's used in the cathodes of lithium ion batteries in the electric vehicle revolution. When we talk to investors, everyone's heard of lithium, they've heard of nickel, nickel sulfate, they've heard of cobalt sulfate. There's not much discussion or there hasn't been much discussion or awareness around manganese. We were having a discussion before we had this interview and talking about awareness. It seems like there's been, how would you say, there's some big heavy hitters or there's been some big companies that have mentioned the need for manganese and that that's had an impact on what you're doing. Absolutely. So um, Elon Musk from Tesla has tweeted about manganese. Um, we've also seen Herbert Deese, the CEO of Volkswagen, talk about manganese um, in uh, in the opening of the Berlin Gigafactory, uh, Elon Musk also commented on the future or the potential of manganese. Uh, we've see, also seen some new manganese-rich formulations in some of the cathode makers. So BASF has designed an NMC battery, nickel manganese cobalt battery, that is 370, which means three parts nickel, seven part manganese, and no cobalt. Uh, we've also seen Esfold develop a new battery cathode, uh, which is just nickel and manganese. They've also taken out the cobalt. So, Companies seem to be moving towards manganese-rich formulations because it takes away some of the price volatility and sustainability issues that you have with cobalt um, and even with the nickel. With the volatility in the price of nickel we've all seen over the past year uh, has been incredible. So the batteries, again, they're these chemistries and everybody's making trade-offs in terms of like prices, performance, what's happening in terms of technology. And so manganese is one of the uh, elements uh, that can be added to the battery. And what does it actually provide? Uh, what are some of the qualities? So the, the most significant quality that uh, manganese provides is stability uh, to prevent thermal runaway. So I think the most the example that I use most frequently is, remember a few years ago, there was an issue with the Samsung Note 8 phones, which would catch on fire. Um, that was caused by thermal runaway. There, were, there was an issue with the battery that caused it to, to overheat and catch on fire. And that's what you want to prevent. So manganese provides the stability that you need with high uh, nickel formulations. It's similar to what the properties of cobalt uh, provide as well. Let's talk about the project. Uh, what's unique about the project and why is it a good source of manganese or this high purity manganese that you need? Right, so currently over 90% of the production of high purity manganese sulfate monohydrate comes out of China. So OEMs are looking for ESG transparency in all of their supply chains. Being a Canadian company listed on a Canadian exchange with an asset in Botswana, feeding our process plant with our own ore is gonna be able to provide OEMs and their partners in the PKM space and the battery space with the transparency that they need to know exactly where their material is coming from, um, the carbon footprint of, of, the, of the material, um, and a sustainable provider of this material. Our asset currently has a, a mine life in excess of 20 years approximately, and we have some optionality with the processing plant that we're designing that uh, would increase our throughput annually. Uh, we also have prospectivity with the assets that we have in Botswana to continue to grow our resource in country. Well, where are you, are you, are you develop? Are you a developer right now, or is it in production, or where? Are we? So we're a developer currently. We yeah. have a PEA yeah. that's uh, that we're upgrading into a feasibility study. Yeah. The economics on the PEA are pretty attractive. Our IRR was eighty percent, mm -hmm. uh, with a startup capex of one hundred sixty million dollars Canadian and an MPV of $440 million Canadian. Uh, we certainly have seen, I think everyone's seen in the mining space and even in our daily lives, uh, cost creep. We've seen everything, uh, all the prices of all our inputs. So we expect that the capex for this plant is going to be higher than what we indicated in our feasibility, in our PEA. But we've also seen an incredible appreciation in the price of the product. So in our PEA, we used a very conservative price of $15.88 a ton for the selling price of high purity manganese sulfate monohydrate. We're seeing the spot market in Europe right now is about $2,500 to $3,000 a ton, and it's even higher in the United States. So while we've seen costs escalate, uh, we're also gonna be able to use a much higher price. So we're expecting that the margin won't change dramatically from our PEA uh, to our feasibility study. How's the location? How's Botswana? Because you hear a lot. You said again that uh, you know that you want to see uh, North American uh, manufacturers, European manufacturers, want to bring it closer uh, to where they're located. 
uh, are we feeling comfortable with Botswana? Botswana is a fantastic jurisdiction. Right? The Fraser yeah. Institute uh, ranked Botswana as the number one jurisdiction to uh, invest in in Africa. Um, it has the longest serving democracy in Africa of over 50 years. And they have one of the best private public partnerships. Uh, as an example, that's through Debswana, which is the joint venture between De Beers, the world's largest diamond company, and the government of Botswana. And that's worked because they've got uh, sound rule of law, they've got mining regulations, uh, and it's a very friendly jurisdiction in which to build projects. There are other projects that are being built in Botswana right now, which you can't say for a lot of other jurisdictions. Um, Komakau is being developed, a copper mine in Botswana, and Sanfire is, is developing or building there in Motheo, copper mine as well. So it's a fantastic jurisdiction and we're very pleased uh, that, uh, that we have a great relationship with the uh, government of Botswana. And we're continuing to develop um, through meetings and keeping the government up to date with our progress because they're keen to diversify away from diamonds and they're keen to be put on the map. And Guiani and our project, which is, to be able, which is going to be able to produce the uh, manganese sulfate in country and add the value curve in country so that Botswana, people from Botswana can benefit is very important to the government of Botswana. Are you funded? So we did uh, two financings last year. They were brokered by Cormark Securities and Beacon Securities. Uh, we raised $23 million Canadian last year. We're still sitting on $16.5 million uh, Canadian. Um, those are allocated towards the finalization of our feasibility study and the construction of our demo plant. Uh, but we also have a number of warrants that are outstanding that are in the money that could potentially bring in some additional capital into the company. But it's, uh, it's a unique story, Michael. It's, uh, it's a story where, because it ticks a lot of boxes um, for ESG, EV transition, we're already talking to, even at the stage where we haven't finalized our feasibility study, we're already talking to a number of financiers, including private equity funds, royalty funds, uh, ESG funds, and your typical, uh, typical bank financiers. Mm -hmm. uh, help me out, uh, Eugene. When I see, um, you know, it, it, you know, companies like yourself that are developing a project, um, you really see them take off because they've signed an off take with X. They sure. signed an off take with Y. Absolutely. What's the universe of those people? Who are the major players there? Well, there's a growing list of battery makers, right? Yeah. There's been a lot of money raised in Europe for new gigafactories. Mm -hmm. um, we are talking with a number of OEMs, we're talking with a number of PCAM manufacturers and battery makers. What's changed for us is being how small we were, being, being in, in, a, in, a, in a mineral that was less recognized. We sometimes had difficulties reaching out to potential off-takers. What's changed in the last six months is that instead of us having to find uh, cold call someone and try and connect with someone at these, at these organizations, now they're reaching out to us. They want to know where, what stage of the project that we're at, how well we're funded, when we might be in production, because they're looking to, prov they're looking to, um, for a sustainable provider of uh, ESG friendly, ESG compliant material that they use in their uh, battery cathodes and in their batteries. Now you had a background. Uh, your your previous job was with Hud Bay. Is Guiani? Is this something that you're going to be developing on your own, or is it something that could potentially be acquired? Our intention is to, to build this and develop this on our own, obviously with the support of uh, financiers that are going to help fund the, uh, the, the process plant and the construction of the mine. But uh, our intention is to fully build this project uh, and uh, leave a legacy in Botswana. Uh, lastly, uh, catalysts over the next 12 months, milestones. Sure. Uh, the first and the immediate one is our feasibility study. So we'll be upgrading from PEA to feasibility study uh, by Q3 of 2022. We're also in the final stages of signing our, const our uh, construction contract for the construction of a demonstration plant in, Box in South Africa. Uh, the purpose of the demonstration plant is one, to prove that our process flow sheet works and that it works at scale. Two, to provide, uh, to produce samples that we can provide to potential offtake finance, offtake partners. And three is a training tool um, to develop the team that we need to develop in Botswana. We'll bring that uh, demonstration plant from South Africa into Botswana. And then we're going to finalize our ESIA later this year, uh, which is required for us to apply for our mining license, which we're anticipating that we'll be able to complete um, by the end of this year. Eugene, thanks for speaking with Kiko. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Pleasure to meet you. I'm at the Mining Investment Event Show here in the North and Quebec City. My name is Michael McRae and you're watching Kiko Mining.
Kitco Mining Special Coverage of the Mining Investment Event of the North is brought to you by EMX Royalty Corp.